Hey, Steve Stein, and welcome to the third uh, and final installment of this idea of using scales or soloing in segmented or fragmented or smaller pieces that can be more effective in your thought process when you've got to grab an idea really quick and you got to learn how to solo with it. Um, what we did in the very first lessons, we talked about creating some simple arpeggio ideas across the fretboard. In the second one, what we did was we looked at how you could build off of a sixth string bar chord. Well, now we're going to look at an idea where we build off of the fifth string bar chord. Okay, and we're going to use C as our example yet again. So we're on a six, or excuse me, a fifth string bar chord. I'm playing C major. And so I'm going to build off of here, and again. If, if you have watched, I would strongly recommend that you watch the other two videos because it's going to help you a lot with this, okay? But if we think traditionally how we look at this stuff, we think C major sitting right here, which is great. Again, we can come up with a lot of really great ideas here. Or we try and build all seven positions across our fretboard, which, as I've said in every video, is absolutely essential. Okay, I'm not trying to, to show you something that says you shouldn't learn how to play scales across your fretboard. Of course you should. This is just another perspective on trying to grab something quick that you can use creatively in your playing when you have a chord that you need to solo over or a group of chords that you need to solo over. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be looking at this six string uh, major bar chord, fifth string major chord, bar chord, excuse me. <laughs> All right. So I need more coffee, I think. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the same idea we did last time. When we made the C major, we made this with those first six notes. Well, we're going to do the same thing here on the fifth string. We've got that as well. See how the same notes? The same notes. But we're going to add in one more string. So we're going to go like this. Notice how my first finger moves up one, so I'm playing C, C, and I'm playing D. Now again, I'm looking for a visual picture here. The C's are my roots, they're my octaves, they're my go-to notes, okay? But I want to see this bigger picture. And then try and be able to get creative inside here. To make some interesting sounding movements, okay? That's that's my end goal. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to take this idea. And then what we're going to do is do exactly that same thing from the C, the octave. Okay? Now let me make sure that you can you can visualize that because it's a little bit weird because of the tuning of the guitar. Here we went 357 357 457. So it's quite symmetrical when you play it here. Okay? What I'm going to do then is I'm just shifting up one fret so now my first finger's on that C. And I'm going to play the same idea but it's going to look a little different. Now notice how in order to make it functional, I'm going to need to move up one fret each time. So I've got this spread fingering, just like I did here. And then the next string I've got a spread fingering as well, but i got to move up one fret. And then the next one I move my first finger up, I'm going to do the same thing. So the first one should be pretty easy for you to see. Then you got to move up one fret and do the same idea. Okay. And notice now what we have is we have this um, connecting positional change on the same string. Right there. Okay, which is pretty cool. Now when we get done, It does it right here again. There's another octave. So if you think about it, this. Okay, see how that's working? Again, if you need to shut the video down for a little while and study this, it's okay, because it's really important that you visualize this idea. Then I run out of strings, of course. Okay, now what makes this really nice is if you're playing over a C chord, Again, you've got your, you know, arpeggios and things sitting right there. But with this idea, it 
it's very easy to start creating something melodic over a fifth string bar chord. So again, maybe you don't have time and your brain isn't really registering exactly what scale you should have or you know, you're always having to go back to the sixth string to find everything. Well, this is a nice way of just sort of bypassing that thought process and grabbing something really quick. Now, what I really like to do with this, and you'll see it in a lot of videos that I do, is that I utilize this idea of the, the center connection from the end of the first one to the beginning of the second one. Which is very Joe Satriani-ish. So you have all of these notes on one string that sounds really, really neat, okay? So I've got this. And then of course I run out of strings. So again, the two things that I want you to get out of this, other than the visualization, because that's only one part. Seeing it is great, but being able to make music with it is, is far greater. So the first step is, is being able to take this first position or this second position and be able to make music with it. Okay, and just explore that a little bit, regardless of the position that you're in. You know, if you're up here and you're going, uh, sorry, if we're playing, I still want to do the same idea. I want to try and get as creative as I can, utilizing notes that correlate with the C uh, major chord, okay? But here's the cool thing too, is if we go a step above that, all right, and we start thinking. And see what I'm doing right there is I'm playing the tail end of this one, right there, and then the beginning of the next octave, right there, and I connect them. And then what I do is use this string as just a movement, and I'm here. Notice how I added that tag on the bottom there, so I went. Now you don't have to play it as that pattern necessarily. Whatever you want. And you can move back and forth between those. Like you might be sitting down here. And then all of a sudden you decide to go and do you know, something like that or whatever it might be. So again, these are all existing on the fretboard simultaneously. You have these arpeggios we talked about in the first one. You've got the six string bar chord idea in the second one. And then you've got this fifth string bar chord idea sitting here in the third one, in the third video. And you can go back and forth between these and make up whatever you want. Again, I'm not really giving you any licks and all that sort of thing. I just want you to explore it. It doesn't have to be fast. You know, you can always make something cool. By just exploring a little bit. So if you took the fifth string idea, of this, our, the arpeggio. And then connected it to the sixth string for some faster ideas or whatever. And again, you gotta think, well, I gotta find C, right? So I gotta be playing off C. And that would connect to my arpeggios. And what's right below me? all of this stuff, okay? So there's some really great ideas that you can come up with, and there's there's a million of these, okay? But I just wanna get you a couple of them. One that's more arpeggio based, um, and then one that's based off the sixth string idea of playing off C, and then one that's based off the fifth string, and then just explore those and see what cool stuff you can come up with. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you click the subscribe button so you're always notified when I have new videos. And if you need help choosing a guitar course that's perfect for you, make sure that you click the Help Me Choose link in the description.